But so, Adrian, so loving, love connecting with you guys. Love your family. Um, we're, we're here with four kids trying to, trying to make sure that we end every day strong. Uh, and when they go to bed, it's incredible. It, we're just fine. Yeah. But we, we love connecting with you. Zoom's the new normal. Um, man, tell us just a little bit. We've been chatting you know, before this recording, but tell us a little bit about how you're seeing the dynamic of the kingdom play out, what you're involved in, um, your whiteboard of all the to-do stuff. You're ramping up, you know, production in terms of you're actually, oh no, someone joined us. Oh boy. Um, someone found my <laughs> Someone. Buyo, love you, bro. I'm going to have to uh, talk to you a bit later, mate. So t- tell us a little bit about what, um, uh, what you're involved in and what the perspective that you guys are seeing, even as a church, as Jubula, and even, you know, how your dad started to see some nuggets of what the kingdom looks like when it feels like there's, there may be no hope to some people. Yeah. So, um, my father started, uh, with what we're doing, we're just working multiple projects. One of the projects, um, one of the jobs I have is, um, helping with content. I no longer work for New Life Covenant Church, but I still work for Tudor Bismarck Ministries. Yeah. Um, and so just working on those pieces. Mm-hmm. And so uh, part of what I've had to do is help him create content. And so we've got, um, one of the things he's working on was um, being a Daniel or Joseph for this generation um, and for this crisis afterwards. Um, and that helped me also see just where the prayers need to be. I think a lot of people, if you read, if you watch too much news, if you're on social media all the time, your prayers are God, how am I going to make it out of here? How am I going to survive? You know, and then you can also get the extreme people who are, this is a faith walk, which it is already, but you know, it's like, I'm not going to worry. I'm going to go out there into the world, lockdown or not, because I'm not going to get sick. You know, you've got those extremes. The balance where he's found is he wants to be that voice and everybody can be that voice for any situation you're in. You're your own Daniel, your own Joseph, because whatever, everybody's got that prayer. God, I need a solution for now. What am I doing in this time with your own household? But you've also got guys, you've got presidents who need answers, you know, for their countries. So everybody's facing their own Pharaoh, their own Nebuchadnezzar kind of situation. And the prayer uh, needs to be that God drop wisdom into your spirit to how to navigate this. Because it, it, the, the thing about coming out of this post lockdown for a lot of people is it's going to be hustle. Yep. And the problem with that sometimes is you, uh, you'll, do, you'll be a jack of all trades and a master of none. Yeah. And so you'll have people like that just trying to find money, mm. trying to do stuff and try, instead of having your steps ordered. Which know? makes sense because if you're living in a time and, and if your soul is in crisis, then you will react with doing whatever it takes just to survive. And, and yeah. so how do you combat that? Because it's, you know, um, just, I mean, even I, I even see it with my kids, right? So my kids, I have four kids in lockdown, which just send me a badge, please. Cause I feel like I deserve to wear something that, uh, you, do, something for you guys, yeah, you guys you deserve it. Um, <laughs> but in many ways. Uh, however, just like when you have one kid crying in lockdown, you've got another one who's, you know, painted all over the wall, another one who needs their diaper changed. You're like, uh, this is reality. And the immediate thing you want to do is like, and I'm just, again, just being completely honest, you want to take, the kids and you want to put them in a box and just <laughs> put it outside and then like, <laughs> like, like Cheerios through, or, or like, like corn curls, you know, through like, and just like, just stay there and relax so that you'll <laughs> go on a date. Um, but, but so how do you actually navigate that? And, and we're just learning how to not react, but respond. And what is, what, what is God saying? Even when, there's chaos and I'm just using my family as an example, but how, how, do, how are you guys responding? And then on the other end, what's the craziest reaction you've seen to COVID? Like something that's just is nonsense and uh, kind of over overload. And then, yeah. 
Well, what we did, what I, what I did um, when lockdown, because we went out of when lockdown was announced the Sunday night, uh, um, I automatically got on my pad and I started writing down certain things. Um, and what they eventually became was a list of topics to discuss as a family. Yeah. Uh, so good. it was on safety, um, mental, your psychological health, your spiritual health, physical health. Uh, and then the social health and under those there were questions that needed to be discussed so under social health one of them was um, are we respecting each other's boundaries because we're in this apartment three people um, are we being good neighbors to our neighbors across so once we had those questions in we had a discussion around the questions um, and one of the things also with like even like the, the social health and mental health was conflict resolution like how do we deal with conflict and um, oh, this is talking... the time you don't want to deal with conflict. This is the time you go, oh, well, let's act like conflict doesn't exist because there's a great yeah. conflict at odds. But, and I know people were joking about, there were a lot of memes going around about there's going to be, there's going to be increased you know, violence cases or you can have you, stuff like that. And people say jokingly, but the stress of being in lockdown eventually gets to human beings. And if you don't, if we didn't have set rules, if we didn't have set rules, put down on paper and discussed uh, as a group, you're learning those dynamics while you're in the middle of it. And that's not good. You can't form policy in the middle of conflict. You've got to have policy before. So we did that and that's how we kind of saw how we would measure, you know, how to act around each other, what we would be doing. Um, and then, you know, with that, it, it helped us then kind of like create this, the ecosystem we have now. So for like what you're going through, I think it'd be, I'm sure you guys had a discussion with the kids when they ask questions, why can't we go outside? Why can't we do this? And I know it'd be difficult to explain to the kids, but I know you had that discussion to explain to them. And then as a couple, you're, you're designating what are the rules for your house. It, it's, it's something in this time, everybody has had to have had that discussion. If you're not alone, if you're living with somebody, even if you've been married for 20 years, Oh, it's there a whole new level of living. Hey, I mean, she is really, I mean, Rachel's just really kind of honored to have someone like me in her house. Um, I'm, I'm just learning to, to kind of turn the other cheek. In. <laughs> no, um, she is, she's amazing. I, I don't know how I would put up with myself. But so, 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 so you're saying don't, don't wait for the, don't wait for the hit. Plan for yeah. what's coming. Because I think, that's it's easy to go well we'll deal with that when it gets here um yeah what if you don't see a way out and i love tyree's input into this and then also rachel in terms of kids like how do you plan what's coming i mean there, there are people saying you know this could last a few more weeks a few more months uh someone that i was on a call with the other day said well hey this is the new normal so social distancing is going to become just part of humanity um when, when you don't know, when you don't see a way out, how do you plan and how do you step well? And I think, I think it would be great for the girls to pipe in here. Um, <laughs> um, I think if anything, there is a way out, you know what I mean? Like, um, life is still going to continue, um, whether we are in lockdown or not, but you know, even post lockdown, there is still life. And I think, um, I think it's, it's, it's coming more as an encouragement, you know, to say that if you are thinking that, you know, like there's, there's nothing to look forward to or things are not going to, you know, this is it. Um, it's not it because we are still alive. We're still going, you know, and um, one of the conversations I was having with somebody was like, um, they, you know, they were just, they were just expressing some of their fears, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, after the lockdown, what does it mean financially? What does it mean for someone who's lost their job? Um, yep. You know, what does it mean for, um, um, yeah, you know, what does it mean? You know, and I, and I, yeah, you know, it's like all those questions like they, and they, and when you look at it, they, they're rooting from fear. So, you know, it, it's like, uh, and also uncertainty, like nobody really knows. But um, in, in that, my, my response to them was just, you know what? I think this is the one one time that we 
we have we have to come together you know as a people like i think what this has done is it's, it's brought us all together um, or made us realize that we actually need each other and we're not we shouldn't be fighting each other so i think it's something that we need to even carry on afterwards because um like you mentioned earlier there's no there's no way like in zimbabwe we're going to be asking for help from other countries, you know, because everybody is in a crisis. <laughs> and everyone is trying to, you know, everyone is trying to fix whatever is going on in there. So as a people, we kind of now need to come together. So you come together as a family, you come together as a community, you come together as a nation. And, to, and, and so there is that hope, and, you know what I mean? And that, that includes, when you're coming together, that includes not... Um, you learn your lessons from it, but it, uh, from this, you know, you make sure you, you your savings is up, etc. But you're not stingy, basically, mm. because oh, it's easy to be stingy right now. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at what you um, ca- carry on, Drew. Yeah. I would say, well, yeah, it, it is. It, I think that's going to be the biggest problem, post, because everybody's like, I don't have a job, um, or like, uh, so I've got a savings. I'm not. I'm going to keep the savings because I don't know when I'm going to get the job. But then that has a ripple effect down into the service industries where, you know, restaurants, uh, restaurants and we, what some people would call luxury stuff, which is restaurants take out. You don't want to diminish the suffering of, of people who don't have. But if, if those businesses are not being supported, if you're not supporting your church, you decide like, listen, my church is now the online church. Um, I'm not going back to a physical church. Yeah. Um, and withhold that, the ripple effect, it's the cycle then that more and more and more. And so that that kind of has to be also in terms of a, like that community feeling has to be there post lockdown. You, you kind of have a responsibility to go to your local restaurant to make sure it's supported. So somebody else has a job and can feed their family. It, it, and it's that part for me is going to be interesting post you know, lockdown, how people react that kind of a way. I, I, I think what you said is key, uh, Tari, in, in the sense of people are rooting from a place of fear. How do you change that? And you, I mean, you gave some really clear examples. How do you change that from, from overflow of fear to overflow of promise? Because I think those two things are, are clashing, right? It's like, um, and Rach, maybe you can kind of speak a little bit about the kids because you've got to proactively um, kind of give them give them some sort of a hope because i think i think the kids need hope like just like yeah. we're going to be inside the rest of our lives um maybe but let's let's put some stuff in front of you that you can kind of kind of look to reach out kind of speak to that yeah i just think um i just think it's you know it's just a time where you can make the most of it so like yes because the kids or because we can't go to so many places we can actually be intentional with this time and you know like just bible studies with the kids have been pretty cool because you know it's teaching obviously it teaches me when i'm going through the bible study with them but it's also like okay during this season of lockdown where fear is you know everyone's also saying that fear is the real virus that's going around or like fear is also a virus that's going around Mm -hmm. and I'm going, okay, how do I um, use this time to, for myself and for my kids to instill not fear and to instill the truth, to instill God's word and, and just his faithfulness, like reading, reading the word. I'm like, he's been here all along and he hasn't left. He's still still here. Um, Yeah. And yeah. That's really good. That's been a big deal. And I think, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, I I was going to just add to that because, I mean, I was also thinking along the same lines and, you know, just to add to that, um, the fact that, you know, you do things like this, you know, where we are connecting this way, just talking to people who are going to positively encourage you, you know, and it it, it actually helps because if you're going to isolate yourself and then not have that interaction, um, you're just going to just boggle yourself with all this fear, you know? So just to add, like just a small point to what you're saying that, you know, just talking about and encouraging each other and just to... Well, well I have a question yeah. for Rachel. Um, and this is more, of, I think, goes to women in general because the women in a household um, 
are always expected to have it together at all times. You're not allowed to have, um, you're not allowed to be bogged down. You do great. Absolutely. And so Tari, Tari is not allowed to be bogged down either. Um, so I want to ask the question, how do you keep yourself encouraged when, you, you know, and it's not superficial, like you, you're bubbly around the kids, you're bubbly around Tommy, um, Tari's bubbly around I make me. Her bubbly. She's, she's not bubbly around me. When she's in my presence, she just automatically <laughs> so, so how do you, are you, do you have your human, do you have human moments or are you allowed to have human moments or, and then how do you encourage yourself in order to stay that encouragement for the household? No, that's good. That's a good, that's a really good question because it's, I guess like as women or wives or mothers, whatever, there is that pressure, you know, unspoken pressure where it's like, okay, I got to keep it together. I got to keep the kids together. I got to keep him together. I got to keep the house together or whatever. And everyone's on that field now, that same playing field. And um, honestly, I had at the, probably at the beginning of this whole thing, I could feel like just fear kind of just closing in. Like just, I could, I, I felt it in my chest. I felt like, you know, my mind goes to worst case scenarios in anything. I'll, I'll just plan out the worst case scenario. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What do you mean? It's over by the curtain, behind the curtain. <laughs> and so I, I've planned out a lot of worst case scenarios toward the beginning going, okay, the world is ending, you know, crazy. Right. So, um, however, in that moment, I felt like, all right, I can either, I need to get resolved. Basically I can either lean into this fear and just run with it because fear is never satisfied. It's always hungry. Yeah. And I can, yeah into that and I'll just go through a crazy spin cycle or I need to resolve in my source like what is my source right now is it going to be fear and going through all the worst case scenarios and trying to figure out what might happen and prepare for the worst or am I going to lean into the source of you know that everlasting truth which is God mm -hmm. like and the verse of um we we live we're in northern california so outside our window we can actually see mountains which is pretty cool and the verse that would just keep echoing inside me is i look to the hills or to the mountains where does my help come from my help comes from the lord the maker of the heavens and earth and that just keeps yeah. kept echoing and echoing and until finally i'm like okay i'm resolved like i'll have moments but I've, I've come to a resolve where I'm like, my trust is not in the world. It's not in government. It's not in healthcare. It's not in, you know, although we take those seriously, it's my trust comes from the Lord. Like my trust is in him. And, um, and that's something where, you know, we can see it in the word, um, mm -hmm. in the Bible, where there's so many stories of natural things happening and there's also at the same time that's happening there's an invisible story taking place too and so yeah. i want to lean into that more than i lean into the natural and just be like yeah. you know god what are you doing yeah like, what are you writing right now what story are we a part of and uh i think that's that's been it it's just continually going back to that resolve of okay where is my trust okay i can freak out but and he knows like i can yeah, it happens. So, anyway. And when she freaks out, I, I just grab her and then I just, I kiss her and then she's all good, like, immediately. It's just, it's something that my kisses have. That, <laughs> I'm, married, I, I'm married, that doesn't work. No, it, it doesn't does work. work. But you, you can see where, you can see where, like, if ever I do preach a good sermon, you can see where it comes from, right? I mean, she is like, she's dead on. And so... Um, He's your sermon. She is, man. <laughs> she, she is. But I think, I think again, knowing like what, what Rachel's saying, looking at where fear is always hungry. And so, but I think hope is, hope is always, um, it's kind of contagious. It's like, yeah, contagious. So fear is hungry. Hope's contagious. And so yeah. how do we, how do we give people hope and how do we continue to, to give each other hope? Like what you said, Tari, connecting with people online 
Um, not from a place of just hustle. Cause I think we can get into that. Like, Oh guys, it's just hustle. Let's figure out ways to make money in this. And, and then that becomes really probably kind of scary. I mean, you wake up in that way and you're like, okay, then, um, then, then, then it's the pressure cooker. Let me not have time for my kids. Let me just figure out how to make this good for me. It's the hustle. Then you've got the other side, which is I want to be a hermit. Let me just recluse. Like the world is, the world is against everything that I'm doing and against itself. Which I think I definitely, I could become a recluse on my dark side where it's like, I don't want to connect with anyone because it's me and my own world. And I've got to figure out how to grow mushrooms in my backyard because I'll just have mushroom soup if everything goes to, you know, yeah. <laughs> really close. Um, so, so yeah, that, so that planning stuff and, and, um, and, and then, and then I think what, what have you seen as the worst reactions? Have you seen people just react? super uh well i wanted to um you asked that question earlier about the COVID, but i actually want to ask you yeah. both a question because one of the rules we discussed one of the things we discussed uh, when we were getting ready for lockdown was what information do we allow number That's one right. into into our mm. spirits and then what information are we allowing into the house mm. and you have to have the discussion you know because we're living with another adult um uh, who's going to be 30. And so he's got, he's getting information from outside that's affecting him and his personality. Um, and so we had to have the discussion. And uh, what I want to ask you is, what are you guys allowing? Because to answer your question about the craziest thing we've seen, the craziest reaction we've seen from COVID would depend on what information you're allowing into, into your home. That's really you know? good. So I, I, I am limiting now. We started off, I, I watch news. News is my channel. You can, I watch news every day, morning. I go to bed watching news, all kinds of news. I've limited myself now to only checking news. No more watch. I don't watch it anymore. I'm limiting it to an hour most. And that's including social media. Because yep. just, it, it, it was too much. Yeah. yeah was too much for me because you start you know when you start going down a rabbit hole you can look at a big picture of okay we're short of masks but then you start going into some of the human tragedies uh, with health workers that are going on right now and that takes you down you know when you see the craziest reactions you're seeing is you can have some really strong opinions <laughs> about the idiocy you know with people so on, what are you guys allowing into your home? Like, because I, um, I'm not so sh sure about Rachel because you, you're, you're very reserved, but I know he's a social media hog. So he's, he's constantly online. So uh, how are you? you that? That? I don't think I'm online a lot. Um, I'm, I'm not saying like you're online, but you're, you're check, you've got your Twitter feed going. Yep, you've yep. got something, something's always, uh, how are you filtering that though? That's really good. And I, and I think it, so for me, if I have too much information, I know myself and I, I will literally like break down and because it's overload, because I have an imagination um, that takes things to the next level. So if I hear something, I already start thinking, how do we turn this into a script? How do we write a song about it? And so um, how do we, how do we go save the world? And so if I hear all this information, uh, it, it, it almost cripples me to the point where I just, I could, I could get on the floor and go, uh, just feed me grapes and bring me cheese. Because this is, this is how it's, this is the best as it can get. So I have to have a filter and, and, and actually being more intentional about that. So one of the things I'm doing is literally pushing my Instagram onto her phone. So I have to, I have to actually say, Hey, I need to post something or I'd like to check something because if it's on, if it's on mine, it's just a habit. Like you get on, you just look at it, you see one thing, you see two things, and then it's yeah. the way that you live that day or those next few hours. Yeah. So I've had to put up kind of guardrails and go, I, it's, it's, it's one thing to say, oh, my will is very strong. Maybe if you're that kind of guy, then fantastic. But I have to put guardrails up in order for me to filter out. Otherwise, it's just a reaction like you with news. Um, you can just get on there and you hear, you hear conspiracy theories, you hear everything that's anti-truth. And I find when I get back into the word and come back to following Jesus, it's simple. 
how do we follow what God says? How do we follow his word? And it's almost like Mm -hmm. the news and social media are the complete opposite to that because Mm -hmm. everything else is about how do we hustle? How do we connect? How do we react? How do we get as much information as we can into our minds? How do we share as much information? How do we gain followers in this time? And then you have Jesus and you read through his words and it's how do you love your neighbor? How do you love your enemy? How do you, um, how do you take off more that you have on your shoulders than to take more on? So yeah. I don't know if that answers your question, but I, but, and Rach can answer it too. Um, there's someone at our door, which, oh yeah. 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 Oh, well, it's a big guy muscles <laughs> okay so how are you filtering how are you filtering the information in the house um okay so i think a, a long time ago i felt like you could only you can only um how do you say it yeah we've got a we've got someone who's coming to Check the dishwasher. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Back. Excuse me as well. Yeah. How about how about we take a little quick break? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Let's take a break. That's cool. Yes, because it could be a little, little loud. You can listen. Okay. Unless you want to go, do you want to go somewhere else? Um, I think it's all right. Okay, you stay that way. No, that's why I gave you a bunch of food over there. This is just real life right here. Yeah, it's real life. Yeah. It's happening. Bathroom break. We need. Hey. Noah. Hey, Levi. They're watching you. And it's like, I think, I think, um, what was Ray, what was Ray saying? Well, I said, let's take a quick break because I can't even think straight. Okay, That's no, like we, yeah, we can take a break. I need to break. put something else. So, so just just for fun, um, Terry, what 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 uh what Netflix series are you watching? I'm interested. No, right now. Maybe. I I we um I, we haven't actually been watching too much TV, just because yeah. once we get the kids down, it's literally like you just fall into each other's yeah. arms and yeah. Um, so like at the beginning I was watching like these documentaries, like I was trying to, I was trying to like, just get, you know, just get your mind going, like not just watching your fiction or your, you know, yeah, so, yeah. um, I was watching, I watched a documentary on, um, on avocados. Really? <laughs> a documentary yes, on avocados. Yes. Um, farming of avocados in Mexico. And how like um there's big avocados there's, like big, big money, money. It's in billions. We <laughs> avocados growing easily in Zim, hey? People have them in their Tommy, you need to watch if you got Netflix, go find Rotten. Yeah. It's called yeah. Rotten. The series is called Rotten. Rotten, yeah. And dude, it is you 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 don't realize the machine that yeah. this world is. You think you're having an avocado. The avocado yeah. farmers in Mexico have their own like army security force to guard their thing to to guard their orchards. They have an army. Yeah, so because it's like, so it's like the the diamonds in uh in Mutari. Yep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because like the it's billions of dollars the avocado like avocado yeah. uh, farmers in Mexico earn. They earn billions, billions. from avocados. And, and it's it's made like huge um imp- a huge impact um on the Mexican economy. Like that's how so that's why These like the are farmers in- are under attack. Like they get they get attacked um by the drug cartels. By the drug cartels because they want money and stuff like that. It, it's it's crazy. It's actually crazy and it's happening right now. <laughs> you need you need to watch Rotten. Dude, you won't you you have to watch Rotten. It is it blew my mind the way these guys put the series together. But it's you kind of see the big machine that a small, like the one I saw, the one I, I enjoyed was the one on garlic. Mm-hmm. Cool. 90%, 90% of the world's garlic comes from China. Okay. There's a thermostat yeah. that shuts off the, the element. Yeah. And when that goes out, it just doesn't come on. Okay. Okay. No, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, um, yeah man. Stay, uh, stay safe. Yep, yeah, you guys too. In these times.
Has it been? Well, now he's going to order a piece. So it's not oh, okay. Oh, it's not. It's not fixed yet. Okay. Which means yeah, we get to yet. spend more money on appliances. Which means <laughs> terrible. <it's not> <laughs> no, you have you have four kids. Put them to work like our parents did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they are. They're, they're that should them. be a post. Like, here's four things that your kids can do to make you money during COVID. Oh my gosh. <laughs> not, yeah. That's what we need okay. from you, Dream. <laughs> no. Okay, you see, like, you Not to make money, just to help around the house. <laughs> you make money by saving that money. That's like a true <laughs> pasta. <laughs> For me, you know, I'm, I'm old school. I'm going to be an old school parent. I see myself being an old school parent. I mean, like, you can go do this. Daddy, I don't want to do dishes. Uh, well, I didn't want to feed you either, but I had to. So please go and do it. Exactly. Is that old school? That's kind of new school. Yeah. <laughs> that's old school for, that's old school for me my mom was like oh you're not doing dishes that's fine don't do dishes it's okay and then she yeah, would let the dishes pile. no but people see yeah. people will come to you and say hey that's manipulation you're using your kids as like child soldiers or chi child like i don't know but i'm like no this is this is family business sir life you sit down <laughs> and, and you need to be life. contributing to the family at the age of four yeah. That go, yes. That's why you go get me my coffee. I actually you learned. learned. To, <laughs> I learned how to how to make sadza. Yeah. Um, like when I was 10, 11, mm -hmm. and my mom would like put a small little chair by the stove, and I would stand on it, and I would actually, I would actually, yeah. Cook how old were you? Ten. At ten. And do you, I, do you have any regret and resentment towards your mom for making you make sadza? No, and no that's just what you do. <laughs> so, so, so that's why I think Dreen's Dreen's ten points on how to make your children during shutdown make you money, make your home more efficient, and I, I think we should do that. And then Terry, if you could send me a a uh, a step by step process on how to make sadza. First of all, I'll teach myself. Then I will teach <laughs> Levi, who's eight. And how to make pizza. There you go. I'd like to see that. Yeah, I can do that. When I, I, was, can do that. When I was eight, I was frying eggs on the stove. I was <laughs> we go. frying eggs that day. So, <laughs> like, so it's stuff like, and we just had to do it. We had to learn. You Dude, know? you're frying eggs at eight, and now you're like frying up global strategies. You're frying up like it's just <laughs> your process, right? And, and like Crying. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, on um, on one of the questions you did uh, you sent to us was um, about um, you know um, uh, how you guys are staying together as a couple because you you know and for us um, we only have each other we have my brother here but he's also keeping to himself everybody's on their own schedule we actually. Um, I, for us, it's not so much a problem in terms of um, just staying connected. Um, but for you guys, you've got the disruption. How are you guys staying connected? Do you have like set times where it's like, or is it set times where the two of you are spending time together, you know, or is it like when the kids are, when they're asleep, that's when? Yeah, I'm going to let Rach answer this question first, and then I will jump in with <clears throat> really the man's perspective here. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Go. Set time. I wish my life worked like that. That would be great. Where I, yeah. the timer goes off and everyone follows suit. But no. Um, I don't know. He keeps talking about he wants to have a date. And I'm like, Tommy, do you know what's happening in the world? We can't. Like, we actually can't go on a date. So. I don't know. I don't know how we're doing it. We're just kind of Let me tell you, step by there's step. three things, three things that we're doing to keep our romance alive. Number one are what I like to call sneaky kisses. So these are kisses <laughs> that have, there's no prior plan. There's no, you, like, it could be anything. It could be while she's changing a diaper. You just got to block your nose, just slide in there, sneaky kiss. It's like <laughs> while she's like cooking food, just slide in there, sneaky kiss. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that's one way to keep connect because i'm i'm a i'm a feel guy in the sense of i i need to like touch her 
uh, and feel connected. Um, and so, and then the second thing I think is, would be coming back to scripture together. What are we both believing and saying for? And I, and I, and I know that sounds really like righteous and like religious, but to, to talk about where we're at together, to say we're believing this for now and tomorrow really does bring some element of romance. I'd say she's yeah, looking at me like, no, you, 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 no, this is like connecting. Yeah. No, just okay. making sure you're connected is the goal, ultimately. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But but I but I, I think for, at least for me is to know that we're on the same page for what we're believing for. So simple things like we're believing that um, this week we'll be able to, um, you know, spend time with the kids in this kind of a way. This week we're standing on the promise of this, and I think that's been really good. And then the third thing um, I would say is really just doing life together. So having, we're, we're being more intentional with having meals together as a family and us yeah. like Rachel and I actually hosting those meals. So literally treating our kids like diplomats. So Madison, how are you seeing today? And she will respond and say, well, dad, here's how I feel like, and then my son Levi will say, well, I really feel like because of all the shutdown, I need more toys. So dad, can we get more toys? And it's amazing. <clears throat> Like actually the, the, the level of smarts that happen because we are intentional with hosting a family dinner, even though our kids are six and eight and two. Yeah. 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 <laughs> are you, are you guys on a, are you guys on a full lockdown or you're just in a um, social distancing, you know, just, is it like a full lockdown as in you're not, not allowed to go out. You can or... never lock. You can never lock this fully down. Okay. Like that no, just doesn't. We're on a full lockdown. You're <laughs> supposed to only go out for essentials. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Food and then like exercise and whatever. So adventure. So he takes it as adventure. So yes, it's a full lockdown. <laughs> it's a full. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, for us, we. Yeah. I, I don't. For us, we. Um, <clears throat> we're all, um we can't really do date nights um you know we have a third party in the house right now we have a third party in the house but it's more i think we just make each other laugh um yeah we've been laughing a lot we've been laughing you guys are great with that and that have you guys heard that that helps your immune system <laughs> Last it, does. it does it does there you go. Yeah. But for us, that's how we know we're okay. As long as we're laughing together, it's I good. know we're okay. Yeah. Yeah. If we're not laughing, I think the weather has has kind of like dampened our spirits. You know, because even like we were walking, I've, I've I've been working out in the apartment. Like the schedule's been working, and then just the last two days were just the it's like freezing cold. It's freezing cold and raining. Mm. And. Yep. That just, you're, I'm just like, I woke up at noon, I was just like, I'm not doing anything today. I am not, I'm not answering emails. I'm just talking to family. I'll work on stuff. I've got another 16 days of this. I, I just felt like doing nothing. So yeah. it's like stuff like that. Um, one of the, that's one of the things that uh, was a worry for me also was everybody's mood's going to be different emotionally. Um, how to respect a person in their emotion, you know, that was a worry for me because uh, when you, w without the lockdown, I know Tari has her people, uh, her friends, and stuff like that. And yeah, you can call them, but it's it's something about being away from each other. You know that oh. help. It does help. I'm I'm gonna say this, and being away from each other does yes. help a relationship. If you are on top of each other like we are right now, constantly, it can be very unhealthy. Yeah. You know? So well, we we've, we've been okay. I love how you guys laugh together as a couple and it challenges, it challenges me to make more jokes in my house. And then to also just, um, uh, to, 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 to follow, to follow suit. Cause I think laughter can be one of the first things to go when you're stressed and, yeah. and, and the joy of the Lord is, is, is our strength according to what we believe, um, and what yeah. we share as, as a belief. And so when you look at joy and that goes, it's like, you could be weak really fast. Um, so yeah. I, I love that. I think that's a big takeaway for me is to, is to keep the joy alive, keep, keep, keep the joy strong. And somehow yeah. I think joy keeps fear at a distance. 
It does. Yeah. It yeah. actually does. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> no, that's really good, guys. Um, what What would you say? Because I, I know we have to jump on again here. Because go ahead. But what would you say to someone who's at the edge of hope right now, going, "Man, I need a miracle tomorrow. Uh, what What can I anchor in today?" If the okay, I'm going to give my view, and uh, for anybody who will watch this and uh, and they don't know who Dream Bismarck is, um, I'm going to premise my answer by saying. I'm a, I'm a strategic kind of person. I'm, I'm like Rachel, I'm worst case, plan backwards, so. Um, you were starting to say something, you were talking about strategic, you're more like Rachel, and. Yeah. So I, I go worst case, so my brain is, um, my answer, the reason I premise that is because my answer is going to be, it might sound dark, but it's just the way my brain works. Um, if somebody needs, if, if there's somebody in a situation like that, whether you're praying for healing for yourself or for somebody who might have contracted this, or you know, you're you don't know how you're going to cover certain bills, etc., because you're kind of on lockdown. Um, the only thing you can do in that moment is just come to the knowledge uh, that the will of God is at play. And there's nothing you can do about it. That's really good. Because um, uh, my dad taught this. And it's one of the things that, that uh, I, I still can't accept it fully. But I, I get it. Um, is the greatest deliverance a person can have is when they know deliverance is not coming and they're okay with it. Hmm. Wow. You basically be delivered from the need. It's a, it's a type of deliverance where... God, this is not going to happen. It's your will for it not to happen. I'm okay with it. Yeah. That's really good, man. Yeah. So the greatest it's, deliverance it's, it's, it's a hard knowing deliverance is not coming. The greatest deliverance is and yeah. Be okay and be okay with it. Wow. And um, he got that from my, my brother Bernstein and his lifetime struggles and what they've been praying for, we have been praying for as a family. Um, and you see other people get hit. There's, there's actually a young girl um, in our church. She was born with the same heart condition as my brother was. And the parents were freaking out um, about, is our child going to die? And um, I made it a mission where that girl, of all the kids we have in our church, that girl, my personal prayer time, um, was Maya and still is. And even when we'd see them at church, they bring, I hold Maya and I just pray with her, pray with her. And they got a doctor's report a couple of months ago that her heart totally healed. Oh, wow. Come on, praise so God. But <clears throat> now I pray, I've been praying those same prayers on my brother, who's now 26. Yeah. And it's just one of those where you kind of like, okay, God. But the greatest deliverance, again, is the will of God is at play. Yeah. There is nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And so if, if somebody is looking, they need that miracle. Whatever it is, if it doesn't come, it's I'm okay. It. I'm okay with it. Because there's a bigger play. Because there's a bigger safety net, too. Like going through, I mean, this is totally kind of off topic, but not in a way, where... <clears throat> we had two miscarriages back to back yep. and that was that was that was hard but yeah you know as you can imagine our people have gone through it too but the the uh, the hope i guess holding on to that was that god caught you know he, god catches things god mm -hmm. god is the one who is beyond this earth or he you know it's the bigger safety net with anything life is we actually do have hope like the maker of the heavens and the earth he's mm -hmm. the one who is um in this story as orchestrating, orchestrating it yeah mm -hmm. so that's so good what you're saying um it's hard i guess to to it's hard, that. Yeah. It's hard to say that to somebody you know you know and that's part of also why it, it's been to to on certain kinds of people, 
to text them because I know like some of what they may be struggling with. And you know, I can only tell them that, you know. And it sounds like, well, that's not what I need to but that's honestly the truth of what you know. And that, one of the things I, 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 I again on the encouragement, how right the encouragement. You, you kind of have a responsibility as well, Tommy, in being that people are contacting you in their desperation. Yeah. You know, how else, you know, you can only say it so many times, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord. There's no, you can just say it so many times before it starts to get at you as well, you know. Because you want to give somebody a proper answer that would help them, something that yeah. would really just, <clears throat> sometimes there's just nothing you can say. And I, and I think, I think it's interesting because one, one thing that I'm finding challenging with people is the combination of feeling desperate just to survive and the hustle of having to do something for the kingdom. So it's like, it's like both. It's like these extreme ends. And what I, and I was telling this to Rach, what I, what I discovered just reading the word, um, you know, and again, this ancient truth that comes from scripture the first two ways of doing life that Jesus recommends is love the Lord your God with all your heart and then love your neighbor. That's it. And that is a disposition as opposed to an action. First of all, it's a disposition. Be in a place where you are loving God with your whole heart because you know that actions don't necessarily depict your heart and then love your neighbor. And I think the rest of it, he says, the rest of it's going to be covered. So all the action stuff, don't do this, try do this, um, stay away from this, all the stuff that requires um, yeah. a, a ton of hustle, if you would say, um, or reactionary sort of kind of lookout mode. Everything comes from a place of disposition. And so I think if anything in this time, maybe what I'm telling people is what is God shifting you to not what he's protecting you from. What is he asking you to lay aside that you might have in the past just been busy? Because if you look at my schedule, people's schedules around the world have come to a complete halt. So conferences, whether it's at Bethel or at Hillsong or even Celebration or Jabula, like we've had to shut those down. So then what is God saying in all of this? Because he's not going, he's not sitting up on the throne going, oh shoot, this COVID thing's messed my plans. He's like, hang on a moment. My plan is happening in spite of this. And so, and actually my plan is working with this. And I think for me, what I'm asking people to do is pause. What is God saying in the pause? Because there's never a pause throughout pattern in scripture. There's never a pause which doesn't get followed up by a massive. Yeah. And so I'm saying, God, what is your pause in this? And and, and, and what do I need to put aside that might be a distraction? Um, so, yeah. yeah. Well, um, I think, um, I think, and maybe there's another discussion point. Um, I, I've actually, and I'm going to get in trouble for this, I've actually stopped following uh, a lot of Christian gospel yeah. people on social media. I've just unfollowed them because it's just content overload. Everybody's saying the same thing just with their own version of stuff, you know? And it's just a little, it's overloaded for me because if, if that's what people, for me it was, if I'm looking to them, watching their feeds to see what they're saying and what, this how I'm supposed to feel or is my, my own experience, um, is my is this a time for me to have my own experience instead of just looking to people? So yeah. the, for the difference is like we can connect like this. I'll follow your I, I follow you on Instagram. So I'll follow you and I'll, we're friends. But if I don't know the person, I'm not following them. No, you know, well, yeah. Because it, this That's is a time for you to get in, you know you have to know who you are and, and, and know who you with are. like really who are you walking with? Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, I think a lot. Yeah, I think a lot of people have to go physically to church. To have, that is their relationship with God, is being in a church service physically. So when you're saying this, what is God saying? This is actually if people are 
taking advantage of this time to actually have a personal conversation and a personal relationship. Yeah. You know. No, that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. I love that. I love follow who you're connected with. Yeah. yeah. What, what the yeah. heck? You know. If, um, and if you're following everybody and just, it's just overload. It's a million. And, yeah, I've been, and it also numbs you, to the, it numbs you to the truth because if you're hearing the truth over and over in different versions, you just become numb to it and don't believe That's it. That's really it's good. You're cynical to it instead of exploring the word for yourself rather than uh, a post on Instagram. Yo, no, man, that's awesome. So basically you're saying if, if anyone's watching this that aren't like connected with us, just stop. Stop right now. Go. No. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm saying... I'm saying <laughs> Just be, just don't <laughs> overload yourself. No, it's so good. No, I, I'm, I'm nobody. Just, that's so good, though. I think yeah. you, know, you know what? Go ahead. Go ahead, Rachel. I was just gonna Go say ahead. the concept of like, um, it's hard to walk forward when you're looking backwards, and it's hard yeah. to, um, <clears throat> to run to something when you're always running away. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. in regards to like this season of you know there's a lot of craziness like a lot, like following people or hearing what people are saying or conspiracy theories or like the world's and all those kinds of things it's hard to um to go toward health or truth or life or hope when you're always looking at the opposite and um and then i honestly i think that's why jesus is like telling us in the bible like keep your eyes focused on him keep your eyes like focus on jesus he is the author and the finisher and the perfecter of our faith and i i mean really that's probably one of the best things to do during this, this time is to to anchor your focus yeah and jesus what you need to be telling people is that jesus is not on instagram Jesus ain't on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is not on Instagram. That's what you said. No, because you know what people do, uh, and, and you, you work in digital space, and talking to people, they will, they determine, they'll, they basically think, if I get every preacher's feed, that's my meditation. Yeah, yeah. That's my meditation. That's not okay. No. Because that's not, that's not, Jesus like that's not God that's not his heart he actually wants to connect with us as sons and daughters not as you know I've yeah. heard someone say God doesn't have grandchildren <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean and it's like oh okay because he he is our father like he ultimately he's our father who we should be connecting with and he that's like an it's an invitation for us right now especially yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's really good. That's uh, and I, I I think this will be challenging, and so I I will I will filter some of this stuff because I do feel like a lot of people there could be people that really need to hear some of this, and uh, yeah, and, and and again like for me and Rich and I first and foremost we're just pumped to keep connecting with you guys. You guys sharpen us big time, and just your how you're walking stuff out with your challenges. Um, really speaks to us. And so thank you guys for continuing to run, fight the good fight. I think there's a lot of bad fights to fight out there. You guys are fighting the right one. So thank you guys so much for being encouragement and just friendship um, to us. Thank you guys also. Hey. Thanks guys. It's actually good to connect yeah. to you guys because um, we actually, we've been talking to people, but this is the first other than family, this is the first teleconference I've had anyway. I don't yeah, know. yeah. It's just been like um, chatting. So it's been good to have this live sort of uh, conversation and discussion and um, just to hear what's happening on the other side of the world also, you know? Yeah. Um, and always, always still a great encouragement also to hear from you guys. And um, you guys are also an inspiration. You're teaching us a lot as well. And we got some tips on how to handle children. <laughs> TJ will be getting...